Right, welcome back again. Um, I'm going to have a look at the next section in this particle uh, interactions. Now I divided chapter 14.1 up into two bits. There's the baryon number and lepton number. Now I'm going to have a look at the conservation of those two numbers in particle interactions. Okay, there's the page numbers for it. Now the syllabus says all you have to do is identify, um, or no, recall, sorry, that these exist. So all you have to do is say, if they gave you a bunch of um, conservation laws and they said which ones are true, you'd have to say baryon and lepton numbers. Okay, and that'd be it. Tick, you get your mark just for identifying that baryon and lepton numbers are conserved. You wouldn't have to do any calculations. They um, sort of say you don't have to do calculations, but um, there's a bit more to it than just calculations. Um, you might have to, um, it, you know, it's hard to say that you might have to identify whether um, baryon number is conserved, but they'd have to give you some of the detail. But you don't have to work the, uh, the baryon numbers out, but you might get a, a tricky one. I, I'm not sure. And in the textbook, I've put plenty of examples in just to cover ourselves for that. Um, because it's pretty straightforward um, and I'd hate to see you miss out on a mark or a part of a mark because you um, were unable to identify whether the uh, particles were uh, obeying conservation laws. Okay, But the main thing is, is to remember those two. Now you probably learnt <coughs> in chemistry maybe, even when you were in, uh, doing junior, junior science or in the... Um, chemistry, if you're doing chemistry as well, you'd learn things like um, conservation of mass. Now that's for chemistry. We're not going to worry about conservation of mass. It is a conservation law or conservation of energy, conservation of momentum. They come a little bit later in 14.2, um, but I'm not going to talk, or 14.3, sorry, I'm not going to worry about them now. The ones I want to concentrate on are these two. Okay, basically all they're saying is that the um, baryon number for the reactants equals the baryon number for the products. There it is there, that's the statement. So if you had to say um, what the conservation of baryon number meant, you'd say the sum, the additive sum of baryon numbers for the reactants would equal the baryon numbers, the sum of baryon numbers for the products, and also uh, the lepton number for the reactants those products. There it is there. There's the two. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of examples. Now one I try and trap my students with is saying, look, what about a, what's, what's wrong with this question? A neutron turns into a um, positron and an electron. Now you probably by now would think that can't be right. It can't be right. This is a bunch of quarks and these are leptons. It can't be right. But I say to my students, look, these two charges cancel out. It's got no charge. So whatever they form has zero charge, just like a neutron. Could that happen? And you know, of course they'd say no. They'd say, where are all the quarks gone? And so on. But let's have a look at it in terms of um, these. Now, in the textbook, I've done these two separately. Then I bring them all together at the end. Um, you combine the two laws, but um, I think it's by now you've got the hang of this. Um, I'll just do it all in one hit. So what we do here is B and L and we look at the two numbers. Now you know a neutron has a um, a baryon number of 1 because after all it's an up, down, down quark. Okay, And each quark would be... Oh that's something I should have mentioned earlier. The baryon number for a quark is a third because when you think about it um, if you apply the formula, a third of the number of quarks minus number of antiquarks, all in brackets, a third of one quark is a third plus a third. So, <coughs> for instance, the baryon number for an up quark is plus a third. Okay, for an anti-up, it would be minus a third. I forgot to mention that, but um, that should make sense. Okay, um, let's get rid of that. 
and have a look at this. So a baryon number for a neutron is plus one. This is an electron, so or a positron. It's not a baryon, so zero, zero. So are they equal? No. So not conserved. Okay, so baryon number is not conserved. Let's have a look at lepton number. No leptons in that. This is the lepton number of that. Now don't fall for the trap. Even though it's positive, it's got a lepton number of minus because it's the antiparticle. And the lepton number of that is plus one. Okay, so that plus one and negative one is conserved. So not conserved, conserved. Question is, could that reaction occur? In terms of lepton numbers, yes. In terms of baryon numbers, no. In terms of conservation of charge, yes. But they must obey both baryon and lepton number conservation. And so this would be... Um, now you could word, use words like um, not allowed. Okay, in other words... Um, nature, if you like, wouldn't allow that reaction to occur. And scientists would never find that reaction going like that. Because these baryon numbers and lepton number conservation have been developed around what they see um, when they smash things together. Okay, so it's not allowed, not permitted or something like that. Listen, I'm just going to rub this off to make some room and we'll have a look at another one. Okay, now this is one you must remember. This is the neutron decay. It's one of the Feynman diagrams and you just need to know it. So a neutron turns into a proton plus an electron plus an electron antineutrino. Now you'll have to learn that one off by heart. Um, if you're going to remember anything in this chapter, remember that and the Feynman diagram that goes with it and you'll see that a little bit later on. I know there's a lot to remember but that's just one you should remember. Now, I'm not doing this in terms of quarks. I could, and we'll do that in the Feynman diagrams. But in terms of B and L, you know that's a lepton, that's a baryon plus one, that's a baryon plus one, zero, zero. Yes, they're equal. So in terms of baryon conservation, yep, that makes sense. In terms of lepton conversation, uh, conservation, zero, that's not a lepton, that's a baryon. Neutron's not a lepton, it's a baryon, so zero. This is a baryon, and remember, the negative, the electron is negative, that's the particle, so that's a plus one. And this is the antiparticle, so it's minus one. And sure enough, zero equals plus one, and minus one together comes to zero. So this is allowed. So that reaction is allowed in terms of conservation. Um, and, I mean, I think by now you'd probably get the hang of it. What about, um, what about this? Let's try, let's try one more. Um, neutron going to proton plus an electron. Now, probably back in Unit 1, when you did uh, nuclear reactions and so on, um, you might have thought, well, a neutron, um, when a proton and electron come together, they create a, a neutron. Um, and probably in junior science, you might have even heard that said, but there's something missing out of that. And you can identify what's missing by looking at its B and L. So B, L, 1, 1, 0. Yep, that's, that's conserved. And um, the other one is the lepton number. That's a baryon, a neutron. It's a baryon. That's a baryon, so it's zero, and this is plus one. So in terms of um, lepton numbers, no. This reaction is not allowed, um, okay, because it uh, doesn't obey lepton conservation. Now you're probably thinking, well, I know how it can obey lepton conservation. There's something missing. And of course, this is how scientists or physicists um, started to look for these particles. They thought there's something missing here. Let's have a look. So what what is missing? I'll just get rid of that. There must be something here that has a minus one in terms of the lepton number. Zero for the baryon, something minus one. Now what 
what substance has a baryon number of 0 and a lepton number of minus 1? Now, I suppose you could think maybe it's a positron or something like that, but you'll find the masses were wrong. If you put a positron in there, it looks like it balances. But physicists not only look for conservation of these um, baryon lepton numbers, it's got to you know, make sense um, energetically. So if the wrong amount of energy is involved, um, it's not going to work anyway. So even though it might be allowed for B and L, it's not allowed on energy grounds. So instead of putting um, a uh, E plus there, you probably realize by now that it has to be a, an electron anti-neutrino. Now you should remember from uh, the early, oh, about chapter 5 or 6 from the unit 1, where that this is beta decay. So when a neutron decays into a proton and a beta particle, uh, you also get the anti-neutrino, the electron anti-neutrino. Now if this was a muon, you'd get the uh, like the mu muon antineutrino. So you get the antineutrino with the uh, electron. So you get the antimatter neutrino with the matter uh, lepton, like the electron. Okay, and so that comes to zero and that all balance. So yes, that's allowed, which is just this one here. Okay, um, I don't know if I can try one more. Got a little bit of time. Let's see if you can do this one. You can probably look at it and think, I can see straight through this. What about a anti-neutron and a uh, electron neutrino gives a proton? Well, let's make it an anti-proton plus a, what do you reckon, um, an electron. Okay, now, is that allowable? Let's have a look. D and L. I mean, you look at that. And you'd think, I've got no idea, but let's look at B and L and see what happens. Anti-neutron, minus 1. Now you could look at the quark composition of that and work it out. It's up, down, down. Um, right, it's the um, anti-version of the neutron. This thing here is um, a lepton. It's an electron neutrino, so it's that. This is an anti-proton, so that'll be minus 1, which is up, up, down. And the electron is a, um, it's a B, it's not a baryon, it's a lepton. Okay, so yes, that works. And lastly, the lepton number, nothing, plus 1. This is 0, and that's plus 1. Right, this is a neutrino, it's an electron neutrino, it's not the antiparticle, so it's plus one. This is the normal matter electron, not the anti-electron, so it's plus one. And so yes, that'll work. Okay, so that's about all there is to that. But really, you know, all you're trying to identify are the two conservation laws. Now in the marking for the syllabus, in the marking for the external exam, <coughs> they might ask, um, write down the names or state two conservation laws for particle interactions. Now you might put baryon and lepton numbers. Okay, now if you get tangled up and you put baryon number and charge, I think you'd probably get the mark for it or the two marks for it. But it's a bit risky um, because we're concentrating on baryon and lepton numbers. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, I think we've done enough for that. The next thing I'll look at will be the start of these Feynman diagrams. 14.2 and you definitely get a Feynman diagram. You have to. It's a big chunk of the course. So we'll pay particular attention to that and then symmetry afterwards. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you.